Morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, down here at the lease block, we uh, have a bit of a muck up, so these ewes that we've got down here, they um, broke out. Well, the unit wasn't working, I kind of knew it wasn't working that well, and then yeah, they ended up breaking out and uh, yeah, getting into all sorts of trouble, so just fixing up some fences at the moment. Um, and yeah, putting up another fence there. Got dad down here, came down for a visit, so he's put him straight to work. And um, we will, yeah, throw these ewes back. But the unit was a, um, they call them Dadamars um, by True Test, uh, S1000, so solar unit. Hey, Alfie. And um, yeah, it, I don't know, something's wrong with that, but shout out to them because they're going to replace it free of charge and uh, go and yeah get it sorted out so hopefully got another one on its way but we've got a yeah we've got a second smaller one that we can uh, use to divide us through so we'll get this done and then get the view through here so you can see snow up on the hills up there so that's the um that's the home farm that's the grange up there so snow down to about 700 meters in mount oxford over here in the in the corner so not too bad, as long as it stays up there and away from us, it'll be good. So we'll wind this up, just weave it, let them through the section. I've got the heating dogs with me. Sit, sit, sit Alfie, sit Alfie. Good boy, red. That's not red. That's blue. Anyhow. So some of the comments in the in the last couple of videos have been um, want people want a bit more explanation of why we do things. So I'll try and it's it's yeah, I forget to do that because it's second nature to me, so I'll try and explain a bit more about why we do things. And um, yeah, if, uh, yeah, and if you need to know anything else, just keep commenting. And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. I've had heaps of new subscribers, so welcome along. And yeah, thanks very much for subscribing. Blue! 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 Alfie, blue! Come on, dear. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. your shoulder <laughs> so this is a this is exactly the same as the one I was talking about uh, well this is an S500 so slightly less power but we got this just to um, kind of fill the gap we've got a big one a little one and a medium sized one now so we're just going to chuck the power and earth cables on here and then we'll set it going and test it see how we do So they just connect on to nuts at the back here. So that's your earth. And your power. So then what we do is just put the power onto a good wire, one of the better wires on the fence, if you've got the best wire on the reel. Put the earth down onto the stand of the standard, so that's earth through that. And then yeah, once again our hot post for from strain right. So it's just tying all those wires together. No uh, whole bunch of no bunch of alligator clips to tie them together. Elfie, go and get up. Go and get up. So we'll turn it on. Give it a test. Ah, it's all right. Yes, yeah. You can just tap that back screen. Get out! Get out! You'll get a shock. You fool. Five point four, five point eight, no, uh, five point zero, six. So that'll be enough. That'll keep the girls in, hopefully. And then, yeah, lots of sunshine, so the, the solar unit should charge. And 
then when we get a chance to take this other one into Rangira, we'll get that one sorted out. So we've just got to go over here, shift the kettle. So we've got, wind a fence down, and uh, it'll be us done down here. Then we'll give you an update on the lambing, feed, uh, lamb feeding shed, what we've done there, and kind of what we've learnt so far. So down here, shifting these cattle at the least block, and they've broken out. So we'll wind this fence up, and um, I'll chuck another one up. I think they probably only just broke out. We saw us over the road shifting the sheep fence and got a bit keen. Hey boys. Alright, so cattle are fed for another few days. Happy boys. Get him behind. Quiet. So before I do any more of the lamb feeding shed, I need to um, shift these cows through. Shifted the ewes through the other day before the rain. Um, then yesterday was horrible, so I didn't worry about doing it then. I really need to have chewed this paddock out, uh, cleaned it right out, so it'll come away well for lambing. For the hill ewes in uh, third week in September. So. Now we're just going to shift these cows through, so we've got the drone here, we might throw that up. Um, but at the moment just trying to mob all these cows up and get them moving along the face over there. So uh, we'll go, Alfie, cows flute, flute. Use hidden dogs to round them up. And then uh, once we've got them going, we can use other ways just to push them along. But yeah, the cows know where they're going walk along the contour there and then back up onto the ridge and through the gate hopefully so heading hogs up there doing their job quite good it's not quite nice to have some heading dogs that there can be um give give cows a bit of a hurry up so they can nip and uh, heal them that's why i like the border collies because they're quite good at healing so um and they get a bit excited. So get them behind you two. So we'll just follow these along. And uh, here, I might throw the drone up later. But as you can see, lots of gorse to spray this summer. It's grown a lot in the last 12 months. Bloody stuff. Just quiet, Jasper. Me? You, you're a bit excited, aren't you? Just, that'll do. So just while we sit here, watch these cows go along the contour, just let them take their time. Push them too hard and they all start falling off and uh, hurt themselves. But I just wanted to explain, get out. Um, so I've explained in the couple of videos we've had, the um, reason we have cows on here, which is to control the grass, to, to groom it pretty much for, um, for lambing and, and then we also had them to develop, so smash all the scrub down. Um, yeah, and they've done a really, really good job at that. The one big issue with having cows on country like this, especially in a really wet year like this, is the tracking. So you see, see all this tracking around the place. Um, yeah, big heavy cows, they do cause a bit of, um, yeah, a bit of erosion. So we're just gonna try and manage that the best we can. We don't want um, any erosion or sediment you know for going into the creek so this is one reason why we are putting a reticulated water scheme in which is to get the cows off the reliant stop them relying on the creeks for their water so then they can just shoot up and drink out of a trough um, and then they won't have to congregate around the creeks as much as they have been doing in the past if that's where they're getting water from so um, always looking to improve the environmental aspect of the farm. Um, yeah, stop any of that surface uh, erosion and sediment going into the waterways. So right now that they're making their way around, we'll go and follow them. Won't be for f and, uh, let's see which way they're going up there.
He's pushing the last of them up this gully. Now we've got them facing the right direction with the drone. So, just ran around this paddock here, managed to get five stragglers in oh, through the paddock we just mustered. So now they're joined up with the cows and, and the ewes where they're meant to be. Oh, I can't catch my breath. Oh, fitness is knackered since COVID. So. Right, we'll shut some gates and head on home. So that bungee gate there, uh, the tape that I just put up is just to stop the cows rubbing on the gates and wrecking them. Um, yeah, make sure they don't get out. You tired dogs? Hey. Jasper's not. Still full of beans, eh Jasper? Yeah. Takes a fair bit to tie him out. Doesn't it? Here. Yeah. <laughs> so I just noticed when I was shutting the gate up here, the bottom of this paddock we just mustered, that there's um, a U in the scrub up here. So we'll go and investigate, make sure she's not stuck in the blackberry. Um, try and make our way through this bush scene somewhere. We'll follow Jasper. <coughs> There she is, stuck in the blackberry, I think. No, I know. She was. Been sitting here for a fair while. She just pulled herself free. Oh, you're one of these ones. It's been hanging out in this gully for a long time. Can M's going real well. Yeah, quite impressed. So. Got the boys on here. Hey boys. Still wait for our back windscreen, so Jasper comes and says hello in my ear. Right here, aren't you? Hello. So here in the lamb feeding shed, um, to update on that, we've got some sawdust down. Um, still gotta fix another leak I found the other day when it rained. But then you gate to the front, put the tarp up here this morning just to stop the easterly. Easterly kind of drizzle just comes straight through. Um, and into the here, so hopefully they'll stop that. And then you've just been cleaning out this bay here. So this will be our, when they come in, they'll come into this bay, get trained on the feeder and the teats, and then get thrown over onto that side. And that's where they'll kind of, the majority of them will be. Um, but this is our feeder. So I think it got used the first time last year, De Lavelle. You put eight tubes on here. Um, so we'll have, Two boards, each with four teats on it. So one one board will be here, and the other one will be on the other side. Um, yeah, there was a question, um, yeah, once again, in the last video about why we're doing this. And then um, I think Dee actually had some good good explanations in there. So thanks for that, Dee. Um, yeah, so the reason we are doing this is, one, we always have a few bottle-fed lambs that we rear ourselves just and that's uh, quite time consuming with um, mixing milk and doing all that fun stuff so feeding them three times a day when they're little and yeah we actually got a, a bigger bulk feeder um, towards the end of last year which worked really well I might actually throw some footage of that in here I think I've still got some from the kids feeding lambs there so and then um, yeah so we're looking at taking one of the triplet lambs off as well so they all come into here as well. So just to give the ewe a bit better chance of doing those triplet lambs better. We've only got 14 of them this year, so there'll be 14 triplet lambs um, come into here, as long as they all birth happily and survive that. And then we are also, um, so yeah, our f my father-in-law, so Jenna's dad, 
has a sheep milking operation. So they are looking at, we're looking at taking some lambs um, off them. So whether that's the triplet ones or the mismothered ones or um, yeah, just whatever, that they always have quite a few there. So there could even be 100, 80 odd of those lambs. So they're milking sheep breed. So Oasis and East Frisians and um, lacrosse, things like that. So that'll be something a bit different for us. We've never had to really deal with the milking sheep um, much. You know, we've been around them, but we, yeah, we don't manage them. So yeah, there'll be some, some interesting learning curves there. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, so this is just, from what I understand, it's oh, not very schooled up on it at all. So um, milk powder goes in the top, plumb water onto the side, connect it to the power, and then you yeah you put your teats um, on your boards, your separator boards out, and then as the lamb comes and drinks, it just um, it it drinks, and then the machine when it senses that they need to be mixed up more milk, will drop some milk powder down, and um, and then mix it full of water, um, yeah, and then it will just keep keep keeping it warm and keep pumping in through. Uh, keep the lines full and then the lambs actually suck through the lines so one thing we were told is not to have it up because you can get the pressure actually pushing the milk through onto the lambs and that's how you can get bloat so that's why it's sitting down so the lambs actually have it's well pretty pretty well level with the teats um so the lambs just have to suck which uh, should keep that bloat at bay hopefully but yeah a lot of things to work out so meal um loose in hay or baleage um yeah of course the milk but milk powder so whether we're going um whether whey based powder or whether we're going whole milk powder um, everyone's got their own opinions and what what works for them so yeah a lot of a lot of things to figure out um, and then the bedding as well so this stuff is a wee bit damp at the moment but we're hoping in the next 10 days two weeks we should get that fairly well dry out and then we're just going to have hay in here um, that we can easily replace and change out and then if, if worst comes to worst we'll just chuck some hay um, on top of the sawdust over there too so just got to go dump this and then shoot away and put a hay, hay bale and a feeder for the calves on the fodder beat feed uh, just got to feed these critters now and um, that'll be the end of this video for today we've got uh, yeah next week or so just setting up some more of that feeder and um, doing our general farm stuff and we're getting pretty close to lambing so we'll be set stocking used out the lease block and uh, and whatnot so we'll feed these guys and uh, call it a night so thanks very much for watching we'll see you in the next one bye